the recording. There we go. Okay, and welcome everybody. It is, what are we? We are Thursday night, and it is April the 6th. I always like to give the date. <laughs> and we are looking at working on our last unit in chemistry, 1046, yay! Um, and it's on the mole. So this is the first um, Skype session on this last unit. And uh, I see we have um, seven participants in. So I see we have April and Jeanette, Katie, Maddie, um, Maggie, I forgot to write you down as being here as well, uh, Marianne, and we have Pam. So after our session tonight, I will go into um, our grades and put in that you have all participated in your online class for this unit. So you won't have to participate in any others. I'm going to hold one more next week uh, in preparation for, um, in case there's any more questions on the mole as you work through this. Um, but that's totally up to you if you want to attend that or not. And you don't, um, for those of you that are here tonight, you don't have to send me an aha moment because you're here tonight. So I'm going to go until approximately 8.30, maybe a little bit more since we're starting a little bit late. Uh, what, um, and I am recording for those that are watching at home, um, and tonight I am taking questions on the mole. I was going to say something else, but I, I f it's lost to me right now. <laughs> Does anybody have any opening questions just general about the course and what's happening at the end or perhaps um, how to uh, um, apply for the spring summer session that starts? I have, I actually have the dates here. I just got them today. The regular session goes from August the 24th to August the 4th. So if you're looking at doing Chem 1047 and the regular session, which is approximately 14 weeks, that starts April the 24th and ends August the 4th. Uh, and then if you're thinking about doing the fast track chemistry too, which is all the fun and all the content <laughs> of the 15, 14 week course down to a quick seven weeks. And that starts June the 12th uh, and goes to August the 4th. Um, it's quick and dirty, so it, it does, you know, get you through the material a lot quicker, but it is definitely challenging. So unless you have a lot of time on your hands to study, I don't recommend doing the fast track course um, unless you super, super need to do that. April, yay, she can see the board. That's awesome. I am going to remember that trick. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, and thank you, April, for hanging in there. So the three little buttons, audio only. You got to turn that off if you're on a Mac. That's awesome. I'm going to let my other colleagues know about that because we were kind of stumped for that. So thank you. Anybody have any questions about, oh, and how to apply? If you go to www.nscc.ca, so the NSCC homepage, there is an Apply Now button. And if you click on that, it will give you information how to register online or how to talk to a registrar in person over the phone. Anybody have any questions about that? Hi, hi, Laurie, it's Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette, I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Uh, yeah, I just went into the waterfront campus, and I was like the first person in line up, and I am registered for the second chemistry, so I did it just in person as well. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. You can definitely uh, register in person. That's great. Are you teaching the second session as well? Well, I saw today that I they have me down for it, but things are always changing in terms of registration, so okay. I'm not, don't, don't. <laughs> Don't count on that yet. <laughs> okay. They, they might, no, they I, might switch me. <laughs> I took the long version because, well, with four kids, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. I, I, as I said, it, it does, it does a job. You know, if you need to get it all done in seven weeks, um, it's quick. But it's really not a fun course. <laughs> I, that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but good for you, the long one, that's great. That'll give you enough time to go through it. And the Chem 1047 is mathematically uh, more heavy than the Chem 1046. Okay. We really needed to set everybody 
up for the foundational chemistry stuff in 1046, like what is a compound, all that sort of stuff. And then we move into some, like this mole unit is a great lead in to Chem 1047 because this is the sort of stuff you do in Chem 1047. Great. My brain melted in this unit, I think. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, we still have a little bit more time. So we still have all of next week and then all the way till April the 19th. I know that in the um, in the the in D2L, uh, the lead instructor has put it a little bit earlier. Um, but I am fine if everybody wants to take the full, you know, until the last day, April the 19th. That's fine with me. Just if you do aren't successful on that test, let me know because you do have to do a makeup of some kind if you fail the test, just like all the other tests. If you fail a test, you have to let me know. And I'm going to be watching too because I don't want to lose anybody in that. Okay, I'm, I'm booked for my test in Bridgewater on, on the 18th, on the Tuesday. Perfect. So is that okay? Yeah, okay. that's okay. perfect. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, so worst comes to worst, if anybody has, you know, just completely um, doesn't do well on that, then, then like for you, if you, you know, I don't jinx you or anything, but let's say that no. the worst thing happens, you can, at least we have 24 hours, right, to yes. uh, talk about what to do with that, so. Okay, thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. And I see Maggie did her, has also registered, so that's great. Any other questions about that? Go ahead and grab the microphone or, or type in the chat. And I'm also going to open it up to just questions about this mole unit. So we're looking at Chapter 6. Um, if you don't have any questions but you'd like to try some, why not try the chapter in review while we're talking on page 190. And if you find that there's a question that's stumping you, just tell me the question and we'll go over it. Pam, you yes, Pam, there should be no problem problem registering next week. <laughs> no worries. If and as a question comes up, a general question, please go ahead. This is what the session's for. We don't it's um, we're not past talking about anything. So feel free to ask any question at any time during this session. <laughs> If you're really worried, Pam, you could call them and just tell them your intentions uh, and uh, they might might be able to hold you a seat. That might be a possibility if you're worried. <laughs> no problem, Pam. Hi, Lori. It's Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi. Uh, Lori, I had a question about on um, page 174. Yes. They have the scale builder, uh, 6.4. Okay, let me and, just... And, yeah. 6.4? 6.4, scale builder. I have the exam. So oh, yes. No. The, yes, on page... I have mine is on 175. Maybe I wrote that down wrong. And it... Anyway, it's 6.4, the scale builder question yeah. there. And it's the it's saying how many moles of NO2 in 1.8 grams of NO2? Perfect. Yes. And, yeah, and I don't seem to be coming up with the answer that they like. Okay. Could you possibly go over? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I do. I will. And uh, yeah, and we'll see what you know what 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 hap What do I get? Let's let's look at that. So it says calculate the number of moles of and this is Skill Builder 6.4. Yeah. Thank you for that. So Skill Builder SB, and we're looking at calculate the number of moles of NO2 in a 1.18 gram sample of NO2. Okay. So the first thing, what's the first thing that we have to to do? What did you do, Katie? I what I did is I found the um, the weight or the AMU for both of them. Yes. And I times it by two for the oxygen. Yep. Perfect. I, okay. I thought I was doing it right. <laughs> yep. Nope. You're, you're, it's, it's not coming up for you. So let's try it. Let's see what, what, what we get. Um, so you're saying you take the nitrogen, molar mass, and that's from the periodic mm -hmm. table. And I have that as from our textbook as 14.01. Yep. And then we're going to add that to oxygen. But there are two oxygen, two moles of oxygen. So we have to multiply 16 
by the two moles of oxygen, and that's going to give the molar mass of the NO2. Yeah. So let's see what that gives us. So 2 times 16 is going to give us 32 grams, and we're going to add that to 14.01 plus 14.01 equals 46.01 grams per mole of NO2. Is that what you got? Yeah, everything's okay. working so far. Perfect. So then <laughs> what we need, nope, that's great. So now what we're looking for is how many moles is a 1.18 uh, gram sample. Just looking at that, are we going to have greater than one mole or less than one mole of NO2? I have them. We have less than one mole. Yes, we should have less than one mole. If 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 you need 46 grams of NO2 to make a mole, and our sample is only 1.18 grams, then we should have less than a mole. So we're going to take that 1.18 gram sample, and uh, you can either straight divide it right now by 46.01, but I like to. I like to use the conversion factor, which is one mole of NO2 is equal to 46.01 uh, grams, and that way my grams cancel out. But it's still straight, it's still dividing, because what I would do is I would take my 1.18, multiply it by 1, doesn't change anything, and then divide by 46.01. So that's the same as saying 1.18 divided by 46.01. Just written down in like the long way. Yeah. So 1.18 divided by 46.01, and I get 0 0.0256 moles. Okay. Is that? Yeah, I got 0 0.039. Oh, well, let me see. Yeah, Back something. in my 1.18 divided by 46.01. And I, can, I have 0 0.0256. Okay, I'm still getting a 0 0.039. On your calculator? Yeah. It, do you yeah, have I, it? Oh, I got what you got, Lori. This is Jeanette. Oh, hi, Jeanette. Okay. And I can find it. Yeah. I'm wondering okay, if you're something's happening. yeah something's funky with your calculator, which is not good. No. <laughs> no. No. Do you have it in degrees, or is it stuck in radians, or something, or gra? It, it, honestly, uh, gra it's not that fancy. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna oh, check sorry. with my other calculator too. One point one eight. Oh, that's not right. I just realized what I'm doing wrong, and it's got nothing to do with the calculator. <laughs> what did you do? Oh, I'm not smart at all today. Okay, instead of putting 1.18, I was putting 1.8. Oh, Mystery solved. Oh, gosh. There you go. That's embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> nope. The nice thing is that you had the process right. It was just the input that was wrong. That's okay. an easy fix. <laughs> yeah, but all you can do is click boxes on the test. Oh shit! I know. Okay, <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that's embarrassing. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Okay, I'm going to bring up, so I'm sure this is helping lots of people just looking at that type of a question as well, so it's it's all good. I want to go back to, so you can ask questions from that, uh, that quiz on page um, 190, or you can go any part of um, chapter 6, uh, or any question that you came across anywhere, and um, let me know. And Beth, I see you've joined us as well. Hello. I'm going to write you down as attending. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I didn't have you on my list, so it's all good. We're up to eight. 
Hi, Lori. It's Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. I have a question. If you could go over number 27 on page 197. Perfect. 197. And what was the number, Jeanette? 27. 27. No problem. Okay, I'm going to bring up another or bring down my page a little bit. Okay, thank there you. We go. You're welcome. So number 27, so we're on page 197, and we're looking at number 27. So a pure gold coin contains 0 0.145 moles of gold. What is its mass? So uh, the information that they gave us is that we have 0 0.145 mole of gold and gold the symbol for gold is a u on the periodic table and they're saying that given how many moles of gold you have what is the mass so this is a conversion from moles to grams for a mass okay so what we need to do is we need to take how many moles we have. So we have 145 moles of gold, which is our symbol AU, and we're going to multiply by the conversion factor of grams uh, per mole. So Jeanette, yeah. where would you find that molar mass? Oh, on the periodic table. Yeah, got it. Yep. So that's, it's number 79. Awesome. So the mass is 196.97. Yes, and that's in grams, right? Yes. Yes. So the question is, are we going to put the grams, so this is our conversion factor uh, rate. Let me grab my thing right here. So this is our conversion factor, and the question mm -hmm. is, do we put the grams on top or the grams on bottom? Or whatever the grams on top. Perfect. Yes, okay. we are. And the reason for that is, I'm just going to put that in now, and you said it was 196.97 grams yep. per one mole. And you just times it. I just had a dull moment myself. I said, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And that's it. And then you just times it. Yeah. I think it's because it's in a gold coin. So when it says that the gold coin contains 0 0.145 moles of gold, of gold, it's probably making you think that it has some other metal in it. You know what I did? I, cu I couldn't get it. I was thinking, why am I not getting it? I just realized I copied the one above for silver at 107.87. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yep. <laughs> okay, I had a dull moment today. <laughs> You're welcome. And I got 28.56 grams. That's how much mole, how many grams of gold would be in that gold coin. Anytime, oh, sorry. No, no go ahead. Thanks. Um, anytime that they're asking for the mass, is that always going to be grams? Yes, yeah. unless they unless they state in the question, um, give it to us in kilograms. Um, but uh, but normally they're just going to ask it for you in grams. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. That's, that's the problem I have is like the math is no problem once we get the problem going, but mm -hmm. it's like trying to figure out what it is that they're asking me to do is probably the biggest problem. <laughs> yes, yeah, and and so I always look at the, the last part of the question. Are they asking me to find moles? Are they asking me to find mass, which would be grams? Are they asking me to find the number of atoms? And sometimes I work backwards, so I'll I'll write down equals grams with a space so at least I know what I need to get to and I always start with what I'm given and then I just kind of fill in after that because that really gives us a good idea of like what your conversion is if I'm starting with a given mole and I want to get to grams then that might give me a hint of what my conversion factor is and where I put like what on top of what knowing that for my conversion factor whatever is in this position here this denominator position that's what cancels out the two as long as they're they're equal but the, I would say Beth, that that's exactly the challenge with this is what exactly are they asking and how do I get to that point with what they've given me and sometimes like if you look at that last part three video where they're talking about um, uh, 
finding the mass of constituent elements, sometimes it takes, and then the empirical stuff, it takes a few steps before you can even get to that final answer. So um, it, 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 it does take it a little bad. bit more it steps. Was, yeah. It was like four, four steps or something like that. Yeah. And that's why I spent so much time in the very beginning about just trying to solidify what a mole is um, because it is such an abstract idea, idea of 602 sextillion. Like that is such a huge number that we can't even fathom. But the, the more you can kind of say, okay, well, that's what the mole is. And uh, I have students that always go back and say, it's a dozen, just to get in th it in their head that it's just a quantity. That's all it is. Can Can I ask you to go over a question? Yeah, for sure. Um, number forty three on page one ninety eight. Forty three. It's a table. Forty three. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's perfect. I'm going to bring that up. Okay. So that's page one ninety eight. And number 43, oh, 43, and there is a table. I won't do them all, but I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll do, we'll get just started on them at least. So yeah, we, so I have a rough idea. Yeah, for sure. And it's a good one too because you, this is the, con this is exactly the conversions that I was talking about. Either they're going to want the mass, the moles, or the number of atoms. Whoops. And then they give you your elements. 90. And A, sodium, carbon, <laughs> whatever V is, I don't know. And I think HG might be mercury, but I'll find out in a moment <laughs> when I go to my uh, periodic table. And then the mass is for each. So sodium, they say that the sample is 38.5, ooh, milligrams, okay. I think that's probably where one of the places that's going to give us tripped up because our masses aren't given in grams. So we have to do a conversion for that first and I'll show you how to do that. And carbon, we have 1.12 moles and then for the V, number of atoms, Ooh, not very many, 214. So let's do the sodium first. They want us to find how many moles and the number of atoms given the um, <clears throat> given the uh, mass of 38.5 milligrams. Now, first thing we have to do is we have to take that 38.5 milligrams, and we need to convert it to grams because when we do mole calculations, it's always based on the gram. So that means we have to multiply that 38.5 grams by a conversion factor. And the conversion factor has to have grams on top and milligrams on the bottom in order to, uh, in order to cancel out the milligrams. Is that OK, Beth, in terms of how I set up that conversion? OK. Perf so that's that's great. Now we have to figure out what is the conversion. How many grams are in a milligram? or how many milligrams are in a gram. Do you, do you know that one off the top of your head? Don't worry if you don't. Is it a thousand? It is a thousand, that's right. One, two, one thousand milligrams in one gram. Okay. Perfect. And if you didn't know that, you could go to the very back of your textbook and it has important conversion factors. And does that come up? Actually, it doesn't come up for milligrams to grams. So that would be something that we'd have to have to know and the same thing with like remember that. kilograms <laughs> yeah okay good like and it's a thousand grams equals a kilogram too that would be another one and then with this what we're going to do is now we just do the calculation we've cancelled out the milligrams we know that it's a thousand milligrams in one gram so that's going to be 38.5 times 1 divided by 1000 so 38.5 divided by 1000 is going to be Oh, get my pen back again. 0 0.0385 grams, which is the same as moving our decimal place over one, two, three spots. 
if you wanted to do it that way, but everyone's going to have a calculator, so that's okay. So that means our mass is actually going to be 0 0.0385 grams, and that's great because we have to have our mass in grams. And then we do the next conversion, which is going to be to moles. And how we do that is we're going to multiply our grams by another conversion factor of uh, one mole is equal to whatever our molar mass is for sodium. So we have to look that up. And sodium is number 11 on our periodic table, and its molar mass is 22.99 grams. So our grams will cancel out, and that's going to leave how many moles we have in our answer. So it's not going to be very many because our, our, our sample is so small. So 0 0.0385 divided by 20. 2.99 is going to be a really small number, 0 .00, oh, 0 0.002 moles is our answer for there. Oh, my pen's not working the greatest. How does that sound, Beth, for that one? Can you see, is that, um, did that conversion work out okay? But I didn't get the same number. You got um, 0 0.002, and I didn't get that. I'm oh, why. did you get longer? Like, I actually have on my calculator 0 0.00167464, but I just rounded it to 0 0.002. Well, mine, mine came up with a, a one decimal and then a bunch of numbers and then... Um, I think it even had an exponent of like oh, yes, three or yeah, <laughs> nope. That's just because it's giving it to you in scientific notation. Um, so what that looks like is, and I'm just going to do it here because I can't, I can't seem to get my whiteboard down any further. But you probably had something like this: one point six seven four times yeah. ten to the negative uh, one, two, three, negative three. Is that the exponent? Um, yeah. Yeah. And Wait all that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. So that's, they're just giving you the exact same number in scientific notation. And so to put that, and that's just because of the calculator you have, it's set to scientific notation mode. You might be able to change that by clicking on a degree button and changing that. But if you can't, all you have to do to get it into just a regular decimal form is take your decimal and move it to the left one, two, three places, drop your decimal, and you're going to get the same number that I get on my calculator. So how do you know that you're supposed to move it over by three? This, this is the exponent. Oh, because it said the three in the corner. Yes, and that negative three, if it's negative, you move it left to make it smaller. If it's a positive number, you're going to move it right to make the number bigger. Oh, dear goodness, okay. <laughs> and, that's, and, that's, and that's as hard as it's going to get with scientific notation. Just okay. move it. If it's a negative number, it means that it's actually a smaller number, and so you're going to move that decimal to the left to make it smaller and if it's a bigger number then you're going to move or sorry if it's a positive exponent that means that your number is actually a bigger number and you're going to move the decimal this way okay and so that will give me my answer if that ever shows up again hey exactly yes okay. yeah awesome I'm glad we had this conversation because I no. never would have known <laughs> yes no problem and then to get the number of atoms so we have 0 0.002 moles now that's when we're going to now multiply by Avogadro's number because for every mole you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. So for that one I'm just going to take 0 0.002, multiply it by 6.02. So 0 0.002 times 6.02 is equal to 0 0.01 204, and then I just add on that 10 to the 23 atoms. Whoops. And that's going to be the number of atoms that I have. 
Is that okay, Beth, how I did that one to get the number of atoms? It, it is. It'll, it'll just take me some time to kind of, yeah. Yeah, no, it does all make sense. Okay, yeah. So it just yeah. takes some more practice. Now, I'm going to throw you for a loop here. So this is written in scientific notation. Scientific notation is always going to be a decimal times 10 to the power of something. The problem with scientific notation is that the proper form for scientific notation is to have an, a whole number in f front of um, the decimal. So I actually have to move this decimal to the right too because my number, my number that starts scientific notation can't have any um, any zeros in front of the decimal so I have to put it after the first number that's greater than zero so I've moved my decimal to the right two to get my number in proper scientific form and when I move that decimal I'm going to also have to change what my power of 10 is so when I had the decimal here let me get my arrow. When I had the decimal here, that 10 to the power of 23 said to move it to the right 23 times. But now that I've moved my decimal up to, to get it between the 1 and the 2, that means that I'm moving my decimal not 23 spaces, now I'm just moving it 21 spaces because I already moved it up 2. So my answer is going to be 1.204 times 10 to the 21 atoms. Are we going to get any questions like that on the test? Possibly, yes. Possibly. Okay, yeah. so that is that is always a rule. Whenever we're putting something in scientific notation, it cannot be a zero. It cannot be a decimal. Yeah, and you can only have one number in front of that decimal as well. And it, it has to okay. be a number other than zero. Okay. Yeah. So that, that, that's a little bit more difficult in terms of you just have to make a decision of when you move that decimal place, what's happening to this um, exponent? Are you making it bigger or are you making it smaller? So it's again back to the fact that it says to move it 23 spaces over, but if I move it up by 2, then that is going to make that decrease. So you just have to, kind of, you have to keep that in mind. And I'm just going to say, and I have Jacqueline has joined. So, hi, Jacqueline. I'm writing you down is in session tonight. Hi. Sorry, oh, I was oh, a little bit are. late. I oh, get no. off work at 7 and then got home and had to get settled in. No worries. I just wanted you to know that I know you're there. Awesome. <laughs> Beth, are you okay with that? Can um, I think that gives you... I, I, I really like that this question uh, looked at uh, milligrams and kilograms, um, but I think you have everything you need to know now. Just if you're going to convert kilograms, remember that your conversion factor is going to be um, grams over kilograms. So you might use um, 1,000 grams over one kilogram as your conversion factor for that. Okay, so we don't always change it into grams like I thought that would kind of be the first step because oh yes what we're dealing with yep yep so for this yeah, okay 1.44 kilograms and I'm sorry I don't have a lot of room I'm just gonna put it here so for 144 kilograms we have to change that first to grams before we can do moles so again we're gonna use that conversion factor we're gonna put grams on top and kilograms on the bottom the kilograms will cancel out, leaving us with grams. And then the conversion factor we're going to use is we just have to think about, okay, how many grams are in one kilogram or how many kilograms are in our one gram? It doesn't matter what you choose. Um, I, I go with knowing that there is 1,000 grams in one kilogram. And then you can go ahead and do the straight thing. Okay. Yeah. If you work on that and you run into any problems um, we can talk about it a little bit later on I'm going to move on or you can okay. do what you do great and that is ask a question on the Q&A and I can answer it there as well okay great thank okay, you. okay no problem so keep working on it and then later on we can we can bring up more up too. and then I'm going to go back because I think I saw Katie had a question see Katie there we go can you do question seven in the chapter review awesome so I'm going to go back to that chapter review page 190 
And question number seven, how many grams of chlorine? Okay, I'm going to bring up a new whiteboard. There. Okay. So for this one, oops, looking at question number seven, page 190, and it says, how many grams of chlorine are there in 25.8 grams of CF2Cl2. So what am I given is 25.8 grams in the compound containing carbon, fluorine, and chlorine. And the question is how much of that 25.8 grams is going to be our chlorine. Right, Katie? That's the one you want me to do? Awesome. Okay, so in this one, the first thing that we need to do is chlorine is, the, is a constituent element. So constituent elements are just the elements that make up our compound. And we see that um, our compound, we have uh, carbon, two fluorines, and two chlorines. So the first thing that we need to do is find out this molar mass of the full compound. So what is its molar mass? Katie, can you still hear me okay? I see Katie's Yeah, back. I just got oh, there you are. back. The, my computer had a moment. Oh, no. <laughs> So I'm this not is having a good day. <laughs> oh, this is the question that you were you were asking, though, correct? I'm on the yes, right absolutely. Okay, Thank you. No problem. So I'm going to first find the molar mass of yeah, CF2. Yeah, out as well. Oh, somebody else went out too. Yeah, I did too. This oh, is Jeanette. I, I got mine just froze for a second, and then I just I could hear you, but I couldn't see the screen. Oh, exact same thing exactly happened to me. Yeah. Everybody, okay. <laughs> yeah, I can see. I, we can see it now. I, I can anyway. Oh, perfect. So. Yeah. yeah okay. It seemed fine to me. <laughs> I just keep going. Um, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that was happening on this side. So I'm going to find the molar mass of this one. So I have carbon, and I have one carbon. So I have to go back to my periodic table, um, and I see that carbon is 12.01 uh, grams per mole. And then I'm going to do my fluorine. But I have two moles of fluorine, so I have to multiply my molar mass by nine uh, of 19 by two. And then I need to do my chlorine, and there's two of them, so I'm just going by those subscripts. And on my periodic table, the molar mass of chlorine is 35.45 grams. So I'm going to do that calculation first, grab my calculator. Um, the 12.01 doesn't change. Two times. 2 times 19 gives me 38 grams, and then 2 times 35.45 gives me 70.9 grams. And then I'm just going to add those up. So 12.01 plus 38 plus 70.9 gives me a grand total of 120.91 grams per mole is uh, the molar mass of carbon, fluorine, and chlorine all together. Next, is everybody, is that okay? Did I not do that right? <laughs> everybody else get that as well? Yeah, that's what I have to. Perfect. Okay, just making sure my calculations are fine. So the next thing, that's of everything. That's of your chlorine, your fluorine, and your carbon together. And the question is saying, how much of that is going to be chlorine? So we know that our chlorine, we have um, 2 times 35.45 is the amount of uh, chlorine in one mole of this compound. So I want to find the percentage of chlorine because once I know the percentage of chlorine in this compound I can then use that with the 25.8 gram sample I can multiply whatever my percentage is and by 25.8 and that's going to give me my mass of chlorine in the end so that's why I need to 
do my percent first. So if my percent composition of Cl2 is going to be this two times the molar mass of chlorine over the total mass of the compound. So I get 2 times 35.45, which I already did, is 70.9, over 120.91, which is dividing. So 70.9 divided by 120.91 is going to give me my decimal of 0 0.586. And then I'm going to multiply it by 100 so that I get my percent, which is 58.6%. So that means that chlorine is 58.6% of this compound. How does that sound? Katie? Or was that Jeanette? Who asked? Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Katie. Katie, yes. Okay. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Can, can I ask, uh, my dog was barking when you were... Oh, yeah. So I'm sorry. No, no, that's so, okay. There's, um, right in the beginning, you have 12.01 plus 2 times 19. Is that because 19 is the molar mass of fluorine? Yes. And, and you're I... multiplying it by 2 because of the... Um, um, the 2 in front of the fluorine and you only add two to the um, carbon? Uh, I'm not actually adding two. Um, I'm going to multiply the 19 by two first, okay. which gives me the 38. And I'm going to multiply the uh, molar mass of chlorine by two first. That gives me the 70.9. And then I'm going to go ahead and add them all up. So if you had done like 12.01 oh, okay. plus two and then multiplied by 19, um, your order of operations are off and you wouldn't get the same answer that I did. Okay. But you're absolutely right. The reason why I have to multiply the molar mass of fluorine by two is because in the uh, formula I have two moles of fluorine. Okay. Yeah. And you're not multiplying the 12 by 2? No, because there's nothing, the, uh, there isn't a subscript on carbon, so Perfect. we assume that to be 1. Whenever there isn't a subscript, we say, oh, that just means that there's 1. Okay. Yeah. I was just confused because the dog was barking and I had your picture over top of where you were writing it. So. <laughs> oh, you can take that off if you go I, up to the... Do you know how to get rid of my picture? No, no. So, that's a pain. Um, go, <laughs> go up to the very top of your screen. There, okay. uh, the blue band, and you'll see a smiley face. Don't click on that. Click on the next. Pick a layout, and then click Content View, and you'll get rid of you'll get rid of the pictures. Hmm. Oh, Presentation View. Yes. Okay. See if ah. that will get rid of me. Not that I don't mind looking at it. Oh, it thank you. Right in the way. I know. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. So that's how you get rid of me, and then I can also pull it up too. But awesome. So okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So that got me the molar mass of the whole compound, and then what I needed to do was find what percent of that is just chlorine. So that's what this calculation here is figuring out. What's the percent composition of chlorine? in this compound. So I again take the molar mass of chlorine, I multiply it by 2 because of the subscript of 2 in the in the compound and I divide it by the total molar mass of the full compound and that's what I did here. So 2 times 35.45 is 70.9 oh, divided by the total molar mass of that compound which is 120.91 and that gave me the decimal 0 0.586. And to change that into a percentage, you always multiply decimals by 100 to get your percentage. So it tells me that 58.6% of this compound is going to be chlorine. So I'm almost there. The last thing I need to do is go, OK, if that compound always has 58.6% chlorine, then if I'm given this 25.8 grams, 
8 gram sample of that compound and I want to know how much of that is chlorine, I'm going to multiply that by the chlorine percentage. But I can't uh, do the do it as 58.6, I always have to do it as the decimal. So I'm just going to use this decimal here, 0 0.586. And then when I put that into my calculator, 25.8 multiplied by 0.586, my mass is 15.12 grams of chlorine. And then that's that should be the answer. Okay, okay, I'm really glad you did that because I didn't go to percentage at all in my brain. And now I'm a little worried because the question six that I thought I was like, yeah, I have it right. I didn't do it like that. Would you have done question six the same way? Because oh. that's asking for moles of oxygen in yeah. 1.6 moles. Okay. Let me see. Well, I don't know. No, I'm, I'm going to look and see what I would do with that. So for question six, it says it how... Similar. Yeah, it's similar, but um, let's see. So I have, I how many moles of oxygen are in 1.6 moles of calcium nitrate or nitrate? Anyway, that that one. And oh, my pen slipped there. I have CaNO3. To. And actually, I wouldn't, I, I, you don't need to do percent here because if you have one mole of this calcium nitrate, you can then say within that one mole, I'm going to have uh, one mole of calcium, I'm going to have two moles of nitrogen, and I'm going to have two times three gives me six moles of oxygen. So one mole of calcium two moles of nitrogen and six moles of oxygen in one mole of calcium and O3-2. Do you okay. follow me that far? I do, and I didn't do it anywhere close to this way, so I'm paying very close attention. Good. <laughs> so then what I can do, if I know that one mole of this contains six oxygens, then 1.6 moles of calcium nitrate is going to give me 1.6 moles times 6 moles because there's 6 moles in every mole of this. I'll get 9.6 moles of oxygen. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, and it, it makes complete sense. I'm just going to be doing some erasing because yeah. that makes way more sense. <laughs> um, yeah, so Thank that you. you're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh math. <laughs> and you're everybody's out of practice with it because unless you're taking math or a health math right now and you've been playing with numbers, but this is the first time in Chem 1046 where we, well, we did a little bit at the very, very beginning. We did a little bit of conversions with temperature and stuff, but we haven't had a lot of practice, so it's just getting your brain back into numbers. So that's very normal to feel like, oh, this is, this is, uh, this is confusing, but it's just you'll get your brain working with it. And there's still lots of time for practice on that too. So I'm just looking through our chat, and I don't have any new questions. If you'd like to ask a new question, just grab the microphone or um, write in the chat bar. I know we're two minutes before 8.30, but I'm just going to stay in the call. No one's left yet, <laughs> so I'm going to stay in for, and we also had kind of a late start, so I'm going to stay until 8.45 at least. So if you're still working on the chapter and review questions, keep on going. And then just bring your questions into session. I just had a question, Lori. Yes, go ahead. Go um, ahead, Beth. So if if I so I'm just really worried because I'm not very good with math, mm -hmm. and I know I just do need a little bit of practice. But if if I do fail, 
Um, you said that there's a makeup project. Is that what it's, would that look like? Would it be something similar to this, like the same content? Yep. Yeah, so for sure. So there's different things for different folks. So it all depends on how you've done in the course, how many tests you've failed, and that sort of a thing. But the way it usually goes is that if you get between 50 and 60 percent, so 60 percent is the pass. Anything under 60 is going to be the fail. If you're between 50 and 60, it's a makeup assignment, and I just send you some questions um, that you have problems with and I'll get you to do them out on paper and then send me your answers in an email telling me where you went wrong and you can ask me questions before you submit it so you don't feel like oh if I don't you know I already didn't know the answers <laughs> hopefully with a little bit back of you know at home and and it being more relaxed um, you can answer them and even then you're still allowed to ask me because it's supposed to be a learning experience so that's that's the easiest one is a makeup uh, assignment. If you are under the 50% mark, um, then you um, then it's going to be uh, another test that you have to do, um, and I create the test, and then you you have to write the test over again. But that's if your mark is under 50. Now. That's, of course, if a student's in good standing and their other tests have been, you know, pretty good and, and uh, their, your overall mark is above 60, um, those are usually what you're, what you're going to look at. Okay, perfect. No problem. And um, if anybody fails and fails drastically, don't, don't be afraid to tell me about it because it's better for me to know and to see if there's anything that we can do to make that up than assuming that there's not. Um, my worst fear is someone's going to fall through the crack and not tell me that they didn't pass a test and then think that they failed when there they're, when there might be something that I can do. So just if anybody fails this test, no matter what your mark is, let me know so that we can we can see what we can do to make it up. You're awesome. I don't know if you know that or not. Oh but. well, that's not just me. That's every we, all of our all the instructors on online. That's that's usually the code that we we go by for sure. But thank you. Well, that's incredible because yeah, I just never expected that coming into adult learning. I thought it was just going to be like fend for yourself and figure it out type thing. But yeah, you guys are amazing. We we try we don't we try not to set you up too much though too because I know everybody's going on to a future program and university and that kind of stuff and it does get harder. Um, I do have you know we do have students that do fail, um, but but uh, but we do understand that um, you know we're all adults and and we're going to we all make mistakes and we're all learning so it's good. I love the NSCC. I really do. <laughs> And I see Marianne um, is confused about something on the lab. How do you do the part that says, what would be the weight in grams if you have 15.6 moles of each substance? How does that work? Uh, Marianne, thank you for bringing up the lab. Most definitely. Um, lab questions here are great. So if you haven't done your lab and um, you have difficulty with it, make sure that you um, ask questions in the Q&A and uh, if you want to wait until next week's Skype and ask some questions before you hand in your final lab, um, do exactly what Marianne's doing and come into the Skype and you can ask me questions about the lab here. So Marianne's question is if you have 15.6 moles, I'm going to write that down, 15.6 moles of whatever substance that you are your sample substance, I'm going to say, because everybody's going to have different substances. Um, what is going to be the weight of that substance in grams? So what you're going to need to do is take that 15.6 moles of your substance and you're going to have to multiply that by a conversion factor in order to convert moles to grams. That conversion factor is called your molar mass. So if your sample is an elemental compound, like uh, then, then you would just get, you'd look it up on, for instance, not that you would use this, I'm just thinking carbon in your kitchen. I can't think of what's only carbon. But if it was just carbon, then you would put the molar mass of carbon. You put the moles on the bottom, grams on the top, and so molar mass is always grams per one mole, and if it was carbon, 
your sample would be 12.01. So this is just one single element and then you would multiply 15.6 by your 12.01 grams and you would get your grams. Now most of you aren't going to be using just a single element because you're looking at substances in your kitchen. So the common ones that I see are things like uh, sodium chloride which is table salt. I see lots of C6 H12 O6, that's your table sugar. Some people do vinegar, which is acetic acid. Um, I can't remember the formula for that, but most of the, the samples that you're going to be doing are going to be compounds. So what you have to do is find the molar mass of your compound. So if we're talking about sodium, it's going to be the molar mass of sodium, which is 22.99, plus the molar mass of chlorine, which is 35.453. Add those up first, and you can see that that's a one-to-one -one ratio, so we didn't have to multiply the molar masses by anything. And you get 22.99 plus 35.453 is equal to 58 point, I'm going to round to two decimals, 44 grams. So that's your molar mass for sodium chloride and if we were going to find out how many grams is in 15.6 moles of sodium chloride then we would put this 58.44 grams on the top. Marianne, does that answer your question? about how to do the 15.6 moles of all of your substances. Awesome, great, and thank you for that question. Lab questions are definitely questions that we can take here in Skype as well. So as you're going through your, your labs, folks, and if you have trouble with any of the questions, the lab is supposed to be a learning opportunity, so by all means, post your questions in the Q&A, and I'm happy to answer them there. Send me the questions through email, that's great as well. Don't feel that you're doing this on your own. You can most definitely ask me questions, and do look at uh, the, last, the first lab that you did, because I gave comments on how to improve on your lab writing in that um, in that first lab so you can kind of take a look at my comments and see if there's anything that you can improve upon that way. And I see Jeanette's typing a message. No problem, Jeanette. Have fun. Good night. We watch The Shield around here. That's our that's our superhero TV show. Agent Coulson is my favorite. <laughs> Katie's a superhero fan too. <laughs> Aww. I'm assess obsessed with Iron Man too, Jacqueline, but I think for different reasons than your son. <laughs>
<laughs> Us too, Katie. <laughs> Uh, Jacqueline. Night, April. Thank you for coming. Oh, Jacqueline's going to go eat supper. That is a long day. And Katie's going to go and clean up. <laughs> oh, busy days all around. Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. Um, and uh, another Skype session next week to finish it off. Good luck, everybody, in your studies. Hang in there. Um, the more practice, the better. So chapter review on page 190, and then the back of the book, no, sorry, the back of the, the chapter starting on page 196. Uh, lots more places to, um, to get used to doing these types of conversion problems. Watch the videos um, if you need to over again. And just ask me questions, post them on the Q&A board, send me uh, private email questions if, you're, if you um, want, uh, and the more practice, the better on these. It will get easier, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, Maggie. <laughs> so any last questions that anybody has? Everyone who's left, are you still working on? Um, are you working on that chapter review or any any final questions I can take before I go? I hate to leave when everybody when there's still people in. <laughs> So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the recording and say goodnight to everybody that's uh, watching the video from home. And um, if you have questions but you can't come to Skype, remember you can always email me your questions and I'll be happy to present them in Skype in your absence. And I hope that uh, the questions that your classmates have asked tonight have been helpful to you as well. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn off the recording.